the nice part, now comes the nicest part. Now comes the part where we can actually, I show you some examples in some special cases where everything becomes a lot, lot simpler. And where we, where we don't have to write all this wrapper code and it's a lot of technical stuff that ideally we wouldn't want to do, right? And so I show you um, two modules, C types and instant, that allow you to uh, write wrapper code or even interface code completely. So, yeah, the instant module. Okay, instant module is a little module that allows you to put C code directly into your Python library. And so the way you, okay, the way you install it is you can just install it using pip. Here's the installation instructions. And down here is an example. So now, what I've done is I've imported, so I, I typed, this is just normal Python. So I just typed in from insert import inline. And so now I can write C code just as a normal um, Python string, okay? So this is just a Python string containing source code of, of a C function. In this case, it's my w, hw1 function. And then, I call hw1 equals inline, so this is the instead on inline function, and I pass in the string of the source code. And so what happens now is that instant automatically compiles this source code, generates the interface code, extracts the function, and stores it as a Python function that I then can access with hw1. So it's all combined what we've done, had to do before, just in a single line of code. And so after I've done this, I can now call print something, and in here I call my hw1 function just if it was a normal, uh, a normal Python function. So I can call this, and I don't have instant installed. So let's follow the installation instructions. Okay, and so now you can see there was an error, um, 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 a message printed out, instant compiling. This is the compilation step where it actually went ahead and compiled the source code and integrated it. But it happens kind of, need, so there was no user interaction required, and then we just get the result. And so obviously this compilation step requires some time, but the trick is now if I call it again, it knows that it has, com has been compiled already. So it caches the comp compiled source codes, and if it sees one that has already been compiled, it just uses that one. And so the compilation step will not be required anymore once you, once you have it done once. Okay, so the, the way it works is that um, the C code or the C++ code that, is, that you pass in is automatically wrapped and that compiled at one time. And so, the, as I mentioned, so these compiled shared object files, they're stored or cached and only recompiled if the source code actually changes. So if I went back to the script, changed the source code, it would, it would see, okay, I need to recompile in this case and then um, start the recompilation step. Otherwise, um, it would just use the cached version. So instant is really simple to use, obviously, but it only works if you have fairly small codes. So you can imagine if you have a big library, you don't want to load in the library as a string and compile it uh, on the fly. Yeah. Um, so one thing that um, I often get asked is if instant also with, works with numpy arrays, and it does. So here's an example where we have instant with numpy. So the trick is now that we that you need to import, import the line in line with numpy. And so, but otherwise it works exactly the same. So now you C code um, takes a numpy array. So this is actually now a two dimensional uh, numpy array where we type in where our function 
it computes the sum of something, and it takes in the dimensions of the array in the x and the y direction. So we're talking about a two-dimensional array, and as I said before, C doesn't know about the dimensions of arrays, so we need to pass them in explicitly. And then again, we pass in the pointer, so the double star thing here, to the first value in my array. And the same thing with the second one. And so then uh, down here, this is just normal C looping. And um, yeah, and so that down here, this is the compilation stop step. I call inline with numpy. I pass in the C codes. And I also need to specify now which of these command, which of these arguments here speci um, belong to the different dimensions of my arrays. Right? So here I specify, okay, x1, which is up here, is the first component of my array, the first dimension of my array, y1, which is this argument up here, is the second dimension array, and the name of the array, or the first component of the array, is called array1, which I've done down here. The same thing with the second array. I can also specify the cache directory where the compiled files should be stored in. So by default, it, just stores, it will be stored in your user directory, but you can, you can change the directory down here. But so, okay, so after you've called this, you have this sum func, and if you look down here, this, this is an example usage, you use it just if it was a normal function in Python. So you, we create two numpy arrays, we create a numpy array, we shape it into a two-dimensional array, make a copy of it, and then just call the function. So you can see if it works. So now it needs to compile the code, and then we get our result. Okay, so this is kind of I, well, what I think is personally the, the, probably the simplest way how you can integrate C code. Then there's C types. So C types is again a different philosophy, and it basically gives you access to C type C data types from Python. So with C types, you can suddenly, you can talk about integers in Python and floats uh, and doubles and, and all these objects that you have uh, also in C. Mm, the nice thing is that you can do all this integration of a library purely in Python. So you don't need to go, you don't need to write wrapper files in, in a .i in a swig format and so on. You can work purely in Python. But the actual interface that you will get is often not as elegant as if you build a pure Python interface. So when you use C types, you will have access to all the typical types that you have also in C. So integers, booleans, doubles, characters, and so on. And you can load in normal C libraries. And the way you do that is you, call, you import C types and you type in C types.cdll and then the path of the library. And now, note this .so file is not one that is, it's not a Python shared module, it's just a normal C shared module. So there was no, um, no this is not, not a special Python module, this is just a normal C module. And so we now need to convert it, so in particular, the functions in these modules, they don't do this, they don't have these wrapper functions. We need to do the conversion uh, still manually. And so basically the way it works now is that if our clib function, so that we're importing this clib.so file and store it as a clib object. And imagine this clib object now has, or the shared function has now a function called function one. And it takes in two, two doubles, and it returns also a double. And the way you specify this in clib is the following. You take in a Python float called arc1 and, con and convert it into a C double with this syntax here. And you store this as a C arc1. And you do the same thing. So this is basically your conversion from Python object to a C type object of type double. So these two now will be now C doubles that are compatible with normal C, uh, doubles in C. And then you specify also that my function one in the clib, 
mod, uh, shared module has a result type also of C double. So I need to tell C, Clip that the return argument is of type double. And once I've done this conversion, I can call the function with my converted, uh, my converted arguments. So I can call clib.function1, carg1, carg2, and then get the result um, directly back. So here's a bit more uh, complex problem. So here, here's a C implementation of three functions, hw1, hw2, and hw3. And the first one just takes in, the first and the second one just take in two doubles. The first one returns a double, the second one doesn't return anything. And the third one returns the double, but not as a return statement, but as a pointer um, in the last argument. And the way, and so there's no, this is just unmodified C code. So there's no um, wrapper, uh, wrapper code now attached. So we just have unmodified C code and compile it into a shared library. So the shared library will contain these three functions. And now the way you can use this from Python using C types is that you load in the C types module, you load this shared object file with the CDLL function which then will give you this hwlib object. Then you specify the result type for, and so we, let's talk first about the first function, the hw1. It, the first one had a c double as a result type, so I specify this here. And then I can just call it. So I can call hlib.hw1, and then I convert the number one into c double. I convert the number 2.14159 into c double, call it, and get the result directly back. The second function works exactly the same, just like just that the result type is now a none rather than a C double. So I can also use none in case my function doesn't return anything. And finally, if you have functions where the return value is passed by reference, then what you do is you create a new C double and you call, you pass in this output variable by reference. So CLIP provides you with this by ref function here that you can use to pass in objects by reference. So basically, C types is just another tool um, for interfacing C functions. Uh, it works in particular if you only have a few functions that you want to interface. It becomes less convenient if you have many, many functions um, that, you, that, you need to, that you need to work with. And then, may, and then in such cases, SWIG might be better. Um, you, you could obviously, now this is not that nice to write from a user's perspective, having to write code like this. So you could write convenience functions that make these function codes here look much, much nicer. But um, doing so um, comes with a performance loss because you end up calling more functions on the way. Okay, that's it for today. Are there any, any questions regarding C types or instant? Okay, so just as a take home message, basically the, the important thing is that there's no tool that does everything. You need to um, pick the tool for your specific case and maybe this diagram helps you a little bit to decide which tool to use. Right, and then I'll see you in two weeks time. Right. Thanks.